Thank you. Okay. Now, start to behind with the support stuff. I talked to David, uh, and he needs about 10 minutes. When David's uh, finished, we'll take a short break. We've been on the beat for a long time, so we've got to keep them. Try to get back on the note. Okay, David. And this is David Key, David's our emergency services the director. He's over all the EMS uh, 911 payments. Okay. Um, on that big thing that I just passed over, all the departments that I actually direct are up. So um, today, I will just be bringing to you, as everyone else has, the uh, the higher points of, that are going to raise the budgets next year. Everything that's there in budget for existing now will stay in there. These are just the higher cost items that I anticipate next year. Um, starting at the top of the page, um, as the emergency management director, the, the computer I have at my desk right now is currently over 10 years old. Um, it was originally bought with 911 funds and it works all the computer systems that are in our building as well. So um, I've gotten an assignment to actually give me a plug on replacing that. Um, we've already had a couple of glitches in it. Unfortunately, it is not replaceable with 911 funds this year. Um, they've changed those guidelines and it can't be purchased this year with that. So I'll be adding that to my computer budget. Um, under the fire marshal's office, um, last year we had an additional person in our budget and it was cut. Uh, Mr. Teams is very overworked right now, a fire marshal doing the fire inspections um, and can, can only really do the crucial life safety inspections and, and, and new construction. Um, with the addition of one other person, uh, he would be able to hit more of the, the lesser inspections that he's not able to do right now. What it would also do is allow us to train that person as his replacement. Um, for someone to come up to be a fire inspector of his level, it takes five to six years worth of training. And uh, in that five to six years, um, Mr. Teams is, is going to be at or close to retirement age. So um, I'm not saying that he has any plans to retire anytime soon, but we need to be looking now and training his you know, replacement. Um, an estimated cost on that, as you see, is about $40,000 at the current rate of pay um, and for a vehicle for him, which we would take out of uh, the fleet that we already have. Uh, working down to the next one is 911 communications. Um, please, anybody with heart failure, when you get down to number one, please raise your hand, I'll call your name. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we currently are in the process, as, as you know, we, we, we hired a communication specialist company to come in to evaluate our communication system. And I'll tell you up front that report is not complete. Um, it should be complete by the middle of February. So we're working on uh, some guesstimates that they gave me over the phone on Friday when we had a uh, conference call with them. Um, as B is directed right there, the estimated cost from half a million dollars to five million dollars to upgrade our conventional system. That is, if we keep the system we have in place, um, do what they're calling as a backhaul with a microwave link between the towers, uh, that will give us a, a, a simulcast paging and a voter return. Um, that will make it so that the fire departments, sheriff's departments, EMS right now don't have to replace the equipment they have. It will make the equipment that they have work better. Um, option C, uh, eight to ten million dollars for a full digital system is a low ball estimate. I'll give you that. That would replace every tower, every piece of equipment, every radio that every fireman, sheriff's department, EMS, every radio in the county to go to a digital system, it would require to replace them. Um, I can tell you that that is probably the, the way of the future, um, but it is not my, in my opinion, that is not the best thing to do about. I, I would use the infrastructure that we have right now, unless their report comes back completely different, uh, and I'll have to go by the expert's opinion, but in my opinion, I think we can upgrade what we have now 
and, and work fine. Um, on number two, under, under 911 communications, uh, we've already allocated for the uh, phone switch that we have right now. We're in the process of, of uh, dotting the T's and crossing the I's on the uh, contract on that, and we should have that completed by July 1. Um, and there again, that, that is fully funded by the 911 funds. Um, number three is two uh, additional personnel for the dispatch office. But we had that in last year's budget. Um, it was cut and I, I was since the last time we had a staffing change. Um, we currently have two people around the block that answer the phone and, and enter calls into the computer. Um, where it mentions the 10,399 calls that were logged in 1994 versus the uh, 33,000 that were, were logged last year. Those were actually calls that were physically entered into the computer. That doesn't count all the time they've answered the phone. That's not, that's not what I talk about when I, when I say calls. Um, for instance, if we had a, a wreck out here at the intersection at uh, the end of Siler Road, in today's nature, you've got 25 or 30 cars standing there with cell phones, and you will get 25 or 30 calls into the 911 center. That's counted as one call when they entered into the computer. But somebody has to answer that phone 25 times, and they have to make sure that, yeah, the last 20 people I talked to said there's a wreck on the George Road, but they have to clarify that is this the same wreck, is it the same location, or is it somebody out here calling for a heart attack? Every phone call has to be answered. And so you can take that 33,000 and multiply it easily by 10, and that's the number of calls that you're answering. In a year's time. Um, the estimated cost on that for those two people, their benefits training in the uniform would be at about $80,000. And that's at the current rate of <laughs> Emergency medical <laughs> services is also a division I'm over. Um, and again, that's <coughs> for four personnel. Uh, we had hoped that those people that we could find funding by now, by January, <coughs> but that funding has not been located. So, um, again, I'll be putting that in next year's budget. Uh, that will allow the, the day shift that we have right now, which is currently a 12 hour shift from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., that will allow me to carry that shift through a 24 hour period. Um, where, where we are coming up short on calls is at night when if we back down to two, two trucks in the Franklin area, anytime a truck goes out of town, that bike that brings us down to one truck. And I don't know of a night in the last two years that we hadn't had a trip to Asheville almost every night. So um, we're, we're backing down to one truck, which is going to cover the entire Franklin metropolitan area for a matter of three to four hours, depending on how long the transport is. Um, complicate that issue with every time Highlands or Nanahala sends a truck anywhere, our policy is to move a truck from the Franklin area to cover their area because if they're tied up with their ambulances busy, then they have no ambulance coverage. So um, when we only have one truck in town and Highlands goes on another run, there for a short period of time, they're going to be unprotected. So we, uh, we desperately need that, that truck at night. Um, as you see there, uh, there's an estimated this year of 7,000 calls. That will be that will be service wide. Um, the very back page of your your handout shows a breakdown of the last 40 years of our ambulance calls. Um, you can see that we've had an increase, of course, every year, and anticipate that to happen again this year. Um, if you'll notice, the last two boxes um, for the Franklin area. In 2012, we reached 5,000 calls. In 2013, we, we went to 5,500 calls. Once the call volume gets in the Franklin area up to 6,000, um, we will be asking again, we'll be here addressing it again for more personnel. Uh, the uh, national standard is about 2,000 calls per crew. Um, and that breaks down, they, they ratio that out as a, the average 40 hour work week is 20,040 hours, and the average is an hour to an hour and a half, so that's 
once you get past the 2000 mark, you start overtaxing your, your crew. So um, this year we're not asking for that, we're just asking for the four personnel. Um, and the estimated cost there is, is about $200,000 um, for four, four people that are training in the uniform. The two ambulances I have listed there are in my current budget. Um, we were fortunate this year that they honored the price that we got from last year's budget. So there was no increase, but I, after talking to the salesman, he didn't know whether they could hold it again this year or not. Um, and he said it could be as much as a 70% increase on the two trucks. Um, that goes from 210,000 to 225. Um, but there again, we we're gonna get, we would ask for those two trucks again. Um, I, our plan is that this, this budget year, if we got two additional trucks this year, that will replace the dilapidated um, fleet that we had, and we can back off in the next budget year and just replace one at a time, one every year. Um, we currently, just in our uh, Medicaid cost report, we have to, to uh, estimate the total mileage for all of our fleet. Our, our ambulance fleet drove 166,000 miles this year. Um, the two new ambulances that we bought last year are pushing almost 40,000 miles already. Um, are the two new ambulances on yet, David? They are not. Um, we have, unfortunately, uh, Kenwood Radio people, when we ordered the radios for those trucks, um, the equipment came, <coughs> the cable that, I don't know if you're aware, we have a radio in the front, radio in the back, but they are tied together with the physical cable. Uh, the cable that came with that, uh, we ordered the long cable, they sent the short cable. We are now in January where apparently nobody in Kenwood can count anything without shutting the entire system down when they do inventories. They don't sell any products until after inventories are done. They're the only one that sells this cable? They're the only ones that, yeah, it's a Kenwood cable. It's the only one that you can't put a Motorola cable. You're really Kenwood. Well, well it, it, it's unfortunately that, it's, that it was just a, the wrong time of year. It is an inventory. It got to be somebody else that has it. Can you call other ambulances? We, we've it's called it. uh, all the radio shops that, that my radio technicians are aware of in the area. I even told them, I said, shop eBay. If you can buy one on eBay, you will buy one off eBay. Do low ambulances have cables in The old ambulance in, one of the ambulances that we're replacing does have one, but if I just pull that cable out, it'll take that ambulance offline. Oh, so it's still running. Yeah, it's still running. We're using it. Um, and the one, the other ambulance that we're replacing, the radio was outdated and it, it didn't match. So um, they have assured me that the second see. week in February that cable should be here. And one, one ambulance is already built. I was putting that cable in, and it's a matter of about three hours to get that done. And the other one will have to take one truck completely offline to make it work. Um, they said that's about a three-day process. Once we get that in, I can stock them and have my, I have to have a state representative come and inspect it. So it's about a week-long process to get them going once we get all, all the uh, supplies on. I, that's just, un, in my opinion, if it's Kenwood's fault, it's just unacceptable. We had six months since, since we've known about this. To not be able to get a cable to reach from the front and back of the ambulance. So we got two new trucks just sitting there ready to go. But for how long now? Two months? We, we, we got here at the end of either the end of December or the first January. I don't remember exactly. I was thinking it was early December, November. Um, in uh, in in my radio voice mm -hmm. defense, I've had we got two radio technicians. One's been out for extended leave for um, family illness, and the other one has been driving our medical our mission critical folks around, showing our sites. He, he lost about two weeks worth of work on uh, showing our consultants where all of our equipment are. So, um, as quickly as we can get them. I, I want them as quickly as you do. I want them on the line. Have you been with the technician shortly? Uh, no, I did not go with them physically. I've, I've been to each one of the meetings when we've met with first responders. That's um, going well, maybe? It's going real well. Um, I had good participation, I think, of each department. Um, the week that, and that's just the nature of the beast, we're all so busy, but the week we planned those meetings, unfortunately, was also the week that they were going through their ISO inspection. 
Um, we had one department that uh, didn't send anybody to the public meeting, but we have an online survey that, that they were made aware of, and, and they can they can you know view their points there. We've also talked to their chief and got some input from their department. Uh, it did very well. Um, and last but not least, uh, our number one addressing department. Um, in this year's budget, we had $18,000 in our sign installation budget. Um, we bought some equipment out of our equipment budget, which we actually got a good price. It's not still not enough. Um, we've spent that money. Uh, the signs, we have some materials in stock and it should get us through the rest of the year, but we could use more. So I, I'm going to be putting in for a 50% increase of the amended budget to bring that to 35000 um, I think everybody's aware of our large, very easily readable signs. Um, we are one of the, and, and I, one of the kickbacks that I get, a lot of people are saying, well, these other counties aren't doing it. That, you know, I go through Clay County and their, their county's not doing it. Jackson County's not doing it. And my answer to that is, I'm, you know, I can't help what other counties are not doing, but we're following the federal guidelines and regulations that we are. But, um, they have pushed the deadline forward. There's no exact deadline when this project has to be complete. At first, when it first came out, it was 2015. All of our signs had to meet these specs. Um, they have since then canceled that uh, deadline because they know the county can't afford to do that. We are currently only replacing torn down signs and putting up signs on new named roads right now. We're not going out unless unless Jeff catches up to current standards. <coughs> unless unless we see a problem sign. Some of the ones in Highlands they get as the, they get moss growing on them and once we have to repair it, we're required by federal mandate to replace it to the new standard. Um, one thing that we haven't been doing just to save save cost and money each intersection is actually supposed to have one on opposite corner. All of our intersections just have the one post. Um, great. We are trying to <coughs> use sparingly, but uh, right now we can use, use more money in that budget. That's, that's all the extras I'll be asking for next year. Sorry, I haven't opened my 10 minutes. <coughs> Thank you, David. Any other questions? <coughs> David? We got it. A little bit behind the last couple of sections, but okay, let's take a try to keep it. I didn't, I didn't call it that. <laughs> we got a little behind here, Robin presentation. Uh, no, we still got three more that are very important. Uh, let's take about, we can about a five or six minutes break. We're going to discuss the walk around, get a record, whatever. Uh, we'll